Sky One, a part of the British Sky Broadcasting Network. Welcome to Sky One's coverage of the Zenith Data Systems Cup second round match between Sheffield Wednesday and Barnsley. An all Yorkshire affair this one which is bound to enhance the atmosphere at Hillsborough and a first for us here at Sky because the Wednesday manager Ron Atkinson will spend the first half not in the dugout but on the gantry with commentator Peter Brackley. We'll be hearing from him throughout the match as well because when he moves back to the dugout we'll still be popping across to hear how he thinks the game is going. Well he's there here in the studio. Our match analyst is David Pleat. David on uh, League form, it would seem that Sheffield Wednesday should have this one wrapped up, but neither team has really been winning much of late. No, Sheffield Wednesday has been playing quite well, precise passing game, um, did very well last week to win comfortably at Derby, but they haven't been winning games. But more importantly, from the players' point of view, they're not losing games, so therefore they can sustain confidence. Uh, from Barnsley's point of view, they've had a little trouble time recently, not winning games, but they've got players returning from injury, and with local derbies, often it fancies the away team, and um, I would expect Barnsley to be going all out for it in a good open attacking game. You were saying that matches between these two sides always endangers a, a bit of bitterness, a bit of anxiety amongst the crowd? Yes, I think there's some needle there. I think the Yorkshire Terriers, both of them, and um, I think at Oakwell this season they had a very tough, hard game and Sheffield Wednesday uh, uh, scored an equaliser right at the very end of the game, which uh, upset Barnsley. Um, I would have thought Barnsley certainly won't be overawed anyway. I mean, um, between them, the two sides, I think they've played something like 40 games. They've only lost eight on eight occasions in the league, so um, it looks pretty close to me. It is a tight affair in prospect. Well, lots more from you later on, David. Let's now cross to uh, Paul Dempsey, our reporter, who's found his way into the Sheffield Wednesday dressing room. Pretty critical audience for Mr Atkinson, his own players getting ready to go out to do battle against Barnsley. Let's find out from the manager of the team. <laughs> Are we changing the... Uh... Team back a little bit. We're going to play with the third man at the back. Carl Palmer's going to play sweeper right, behind uh, Peters, Pearson Rebel. and Shirtliff. Four midfield players, Harks, Worthington pushing into midfield with uh, Wilson and Sheridan. And up front, we're going to play three out and out front players. Um, Francis with Hurst and Williams. Very quickly, Ron, why have you gone back to three man defence tonight? Well, we think it enables us to. We wanted really to play three forwards, and we think against this particular side, it's. Um, that would be the best way of being able to utilise three forwards. Thank you very much indeed. Barnsley team news very quickly. Mel Machen sticks with the 11 that failed him in his words uh, on Saturday at Brighton. He says this is their last chance to put it right tonight. Thanks very much, Paul. Well, a great match in prospect. Everything is set. Make sure you stay right there. We'll be back with the whole thing live right after the break. Deep, Granddad. Well, it's only a bolting mate, though. <laughs> Whatever have you been up to? It wasn't his fault, Mama. I just slipped. He was rescuing us from the aliens. Oh, we were only playing. Well, you ought to know better at your age. Now, get out of those mucky things, all of you. You can't have your mother see you looking like that. Oh, you look so nice when you came. How old are you now? I'm 61, sweetheart. But how old is Granddad? About 12. <laughs> <laughs> While they're pretending not to notice that your nose is feeling beastly, <gasps> along comes a beastly song through. <gasps> this is when Hall's mentholyptus can transform you. As Hall's soothing eucalyptus melts away the discomfort from your throat, it releases penetrating menthol vapor action to ease your breathing. Rejoin the human race with your favorite Hall's mentholyptus. 
Are you confused about switching to unleaded and trapped into using four star? Help is on its way. For Esso, who were first to sell unleaded in the UK, have produced a simple guide that releases you. It explains who can make the break to Esso unleaded and who to Esso Super Plus unleaded. Check the guide. There's nothing to hold you back. Well, couldn't let anything come between me and my caliber. Welcome back to Sky One's coverage of the Zenith Data Systems Cup second round match between Sheffield Wednesday and Barnsley. The kickoff just seconds away, so I think it's time to join our match commentators, Ron Atkinson and Peter Brackley. And here at Hillsborough, we're always ready now then for the kickoff as we look at the Sheffield Wednesday side. This is the 11 chosen by Ron Atkinson, who tonight then is sitting alongside me in the commentary box. A lot of creative players in the side. The likes of Danny Wilson, John Sheridan and Carlton Palmer. Nigel Pearson at the back is having a tremendous season. And up front, the prodigious talent of Trevor Francis, complementing the blossoming skills of Paul Williams and David Hurst. So, Ron Atkinson, let's just confirm how you're going to play with that formation. Yes, we are, we're going to play with uh, Carlton Palmer. New formation for us tonight. Carlton Palmer's going to play behind the two markers, Pearson and Shirtliff, and we'll push the full-backs on into midfield. Right, well now here that is the Barnsley lineup. They didn't want Ron to know this, and I don't think he does yet. <laughs> He's just looking at it for the first time. He's just come hot foot from the dressing room. They've been beset by injuries lately, so it's a chance for some of those who've just returned to step up their match fitness. And certainly look out for Carl Tyler at the back, and the man with a £2 million price tag, and Stephen Agnew, one of those returning. He wears the number 10 shirt, Barnsley's outstanding player. So we can see how they're going to line up. Ron looking at this for the first time. Uh, they're also playing with a sweeper, Ron. Yes, uh, they play three central defenders, and they also play with a five-man midfield, which is a little bit uh, unusual in this day and age. And Brendan O'Connell will be supplementing those two up front, Saville and Ramble. The referee tonight is Bob Nixon from Wirral, and we're almost ready then for the kickoff. Sheffield Wednesday with an unblemished home record. Barnsley with only one win in their last 11 league games. But with the memory of that superb 5-3 win at West Brom in the last round of the Zenith Cup to spur them off. Barnsley in the red shirts and white shorts. And they're attacking the goal to our left in the first half. <laughs> Waiting for the signal. And away we go. Sheffield Wednesday, of course, in their familiar blue and white stripes. Ian Banks for Barnsley. They really were quite dreadful in the second half at Brighton on Saturday, having been well in contention at half-time, and they lost by the only goal, Barnsley. The display described by Mel Machin, their manager, as diabolical. Sheffield Wednesday themselves, a two-all draw, and they had to come from behind here against Ipswich. And we'll ask Ron Atkinson about that display in a moment. Archdeacon pumping it through. Away by Palmer. That's Agnew. And in a short touch by Carlton Palmer in this fairly unfamiliar role for Palmer. Stephen Agnew, who's been out for some time through injury, and a very important man in the Barnsley side. Steer back by Tyler. Under pressure from Trevor Francis. And he is young Carl Tyler, six England under 21 international caps to his name. Away by Palmer, only as far though as Agnew. Here's Worthington now, he'll be patrolling that left flank. Sheffield Wednesday, who've been playing some exhilarating football this season. And the one or two results have gone against them. And Ron Atkinson alongside me here, already fairly animated. I don't know who's going to control his emotions tonight. It's a new experience for me sitting next to Ron when his team are playing. I hope he doesn't start throwing things. Agnew now for Barnsley. This is Archdeacon. 
chipped through by Bax, looking for Ramel. And Worthington. And Sheridan now playing Wednesday out of trouble, and then back into it, really. Wilson doing well to hold off the challenge from Banks. Ron, how's it settling down for you? Well, at the moment, it's all a little bit busy. Every, there's, a, there's a lot of players in midfield. They've got lots of midfield players. Uh, so weird at the moment, it hasn't really settled into any sort of a pattern. I should point out, Ron is in constant touch with the dugout here. He has a telephone communication. So perhaps we'll hear him on the phone a little later on in the half. As Hurst trying to burst his way through there. David Hurst, leading goal scorer for Sheffield Wednesday this season. 13 goals in all. <laughs> Williams going in. And also O'Connell, who's a very busy player. He had an excellent first half at Brighton, but then a lot of the Barnsley players did. It just fell away in the second half. Shatliff with the header, not too decisively though. That's well blocked. And Barnsley were in danger there of their own making. And they got away with a free kick after Taggart got caught in possession. So good persistence then by David Hurst and very nearly embarrassed young Jerry Taggart, Northern Ireland International. Yeah, I think one of the problems Taggart may have, or we're hoping he has anyway, he's a left-footed player and he's playing on the right right hand side of their defence. And you saw there, it's sometimes a little bit uncomfortable for him when the ball falls on his right foot. Taggart, one of the players who came back on Saturday after a while out through injury. And I think uh, one or two of them are feeling their way back. So it's a chance for them to step up that match fitness. Kevin Pressman here, goalkeeper for Sheffield Wednesday. And very consistent he's been too. Carlton Palmer now. Versatile player, is falling into this defensive role tonight. He's been mainly in midfield for Sheffield Wednesday this season. Fleming. The sweeper for Barnsley taking the chance to come forward. And doing so with Menace too. So, well, did he keep that in play? No, it's a goal kick to Sheffield Wednesday. So Ron and his team couldn't breathe a sigh of relief. And he's saddled one of the front two for Barnsley. Worthington beaten in the air by McCord. That's Banks. It's a useful pass too for Savile to chase. He has a lot of strength. He's a tidy striker. Good ball into Rimmel. And well, Shiver Wednesday. It was their turn to always be embarrassed there. Francis now. That goes Williams. Coming with him. O'Connell. Play some purposeful football quite clearly. This is Palmer for Sheffield Wednesday. What about that moment at the back, Ron? Yes, it, um, I think we were a little bit naive there. I mean, Saville broke in behind our, the left hand side of our defence. Now he's basically a left footed player, and Peter Shirtliff allowed him to turn back and produce the cross. Um, that was a let off for us. Francis trying to whip his cross in. And a moment's hesitation at the back could have been costly. Archdeacon now for Barnsley. There's a steady performer down there left. That's Agnew in quickly. Good tackle though by Hearts. He's been doubtful for this game because of injury. But in the end, he kept his place. And it's Phil King who stood down with Ron changing the formation as we heard earlier on. Carl Tyler now for Barnsley. This is Fleming. Now for Banks. 
One of the experienced players in the Barnsley side, Ian Banks, his second spell, having moved around the football scene for a while. Agnew now. Too casual, though. Worthington read it well. And the free kick given to Sheffield Wednesday. The second time these two sides have met this season. There was a one-all draw. An excellent game, too, at Oakwell earlier in the season. Late goal from Carlton Palmer, earning Sheffield Wednesday their point. But I think uh, you felt on the night, Ron, you might have got more from that one. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a super game that night. Um, we controlled it for most of the game, and then just before the end, uh, they took the lead, and we thought we were finished, and then... Um, Collector's item, Carton Palmer scored a header with about the last kick of the match, I think. It is a collector's item, isn't it? He's not scored, I think, for 18 months before that one. No doubt he's had some ribbing in the dressing room. He's had some stick in the coach's room, I want to tell you. <laughs> I haven't had that phone ring yet, Ron, from down on the dugout. Do you think they've forgotten you're here? <laughs> well, at the moment, there's not a lot happening, Peter, to be fair. We're a, bit, we're a little bit... There's Richie, your assistant. Yeah, we're a little bit... So he'll be shouting, you'll hear his voice in a bit, that's for sure. Um, we're a little bit negative at the moment, we're not really... I'd like to see Harks and uh, Worthington try and force the issue a little bit more in the wide positions and try and uh, get the game down the field a little bit. They have been key players for you on the flanks, haven't they? Yes. First to Wilson. Another man who's had an excellent season, Danny Wilson. Former Luton player, of course. Here's Trevor Francis, so anxious to make his mark in the Wednesday side at the age of 36. Good skill, didn't quite come off though. Agnew. <laughs> Referee just having a quiet word with Peter Shirtliff. The decision going in Barnsley's favour. We've had this poor run lately, Barnsley. Having started the season very promisingly, and in October, he had an excellent run and did seem then to be threatening the leading sides. But now they've fallen away a bit, down to 12th place. Sheffield Wednesday, of course, third. Behind West Ham and Oldham, setting the pace. Tyler. Pearson's header, good interception though by Agnew. And the referee using the advantage well then. Archdeacon now. O'Connell. And Palmer had the strength to hold him off. And that was good defensive play then by Carlton Palmer. No goals as yet. In the first half of this Zenith Cup second round tie at Hillsborough. Sheffield Wednesday against their Yorkshire rivals Barnsley. And these pictures coming to you live. A powerful header then by Tyler. Shirtliff. Pursued by Rammel. Now Palmer. Wilson, who links up so well with Sheridan in the side. Here's Sheridan now. And these two could weave some pretty patterns. Worthington now. Sheridan. And it was Bax who tied it up for Barnsley. Well, this is where we are then, up in the commentary box on the gantry. In the second half, Ron will be down in the dugout. Bit of an unusual position for a manager to be on a match night with his team are playing. It's interesting, though, when you sat up here, from particularly good position, this, you know, good aerial position. See the whole picture of the game. Um, you have, of course, got to be careful you don't give vent to your emotions. <laughs> We've got a bleeper handy, don't worry. Ron's at, gonna, uh, at, the game, at the moment, though, to be fair, it's such a cold game. It's... Um, it's a little bit clinical, a little bit technical, but there's not much happening. I'm a bit disappointed. We've, we haven't really got a head of steam up yet. Now, Rammel. 
persevering here for Barnsley, who certainly created one moment of anxiety in the Sheffield Wednesday defence earlier on. And Archdeacon has forced the throw here. Archdeacon, good play by him. Bramble's in the middle, much too long for him though. Disappointing cross then from Archdeacon, who done well to find the situation for himself. Former Celtic player, who's been an ever-present in the Barnsley side this season. Yes, we're going to make sure the steps are ready for Ron to go down at half-time, but if they're losing, it'll probably jump off the gantry. Spurs jumping. Francis. No joy, though. Pearson. Looking for Francis. The lines are flagging furiously down below us. I don't think the referee has spotted him. Well, he has now. And I think, uh, yes, he's pointing... Either throw, yes, it is a throw for Barnsley, so the ball had gone out of play as Trevor Francis challenged. And there's the Barnsley manager in the cap there, Mel Machen. Very disappointed with their display at Brighton, hoping for an improved one tonight. Yeah, it'd be quite happy at the moment, Melville, I would guess. I mean, we've been playing 10 minutes. We haven't, we haven't had a strike at their goal. We've put them under no pressure at the back. Um, you're, we're in a home game, and I would have liked to have seen us carry the fight more. And that has been the story so far, isn't it? You've been playing well here at Hillsborough. Sorry? So you've been, you've been playing well here at Hillsborough, so it's uh, gone against the grain at the moment, isn't it? Yes, I mean, we haven't made anything happen yet. He well, could chip, he could chip the keeper here, the keeper's position. It's Worthington. Flick on was from Francis, and indeed Baker had only just got back then, and you were almost predicting uh, the outcome there, on. Well, he was stood well off his line was, uh, with Baker, and... I think if that had been John Sheridan having the kick, he might have had a go for that. And he's not the tallest of goalkeepers either, Clive Baker. He's only around five foot nine. Having said that, he's having a, an excellent season. But he might just have been pulled off his line then. And he didn't really look like getting that one. So, testing time here for Clive Baker, the Barnsley goalkeeper. Well, it's quite nice for us to see, you know, to see him employed. I was beginning to think he was going to have a free night. But still no genuine opportunity created by Sheffield Wednesday so far. A jump by Taggart, and then from Rammel. Now Williams. Taggart again. Strong in the air at the back, Barnsley, with Taggart and Tyler. But so far, with 15 minutes gone, this game without a goal, Sheffield Wednesday nil, Barnsley nil. First. It goes Taggart very ferociously there. He's uh, quite a character and something of a cult figure at Barnsley. He got an injury last season and turned up with a bandage on his arm and apparently all the supporters turned up with bandages for the next few games. But he's a young man with a lot of promise and a lot of heart too, so I'm sure he'll carry on. But certainly so far, on you, you've not settled into your stride yet. No, and I think a, little, a lot of that's due to the fact that... Um, oof, that's nasty. That looks like one of those stick-on scars. <laughs> no, we haven't... Um, as I said, we, have, we haven't particularly got going at all. Um, but that's all credit to Barnsley. They've taken, they're trying to take the heat out of the game with their passing. Well organised side. Here's the uh, challenge again. It was Sheridan there with Taggart, who was certainly going to win the ball then, wasn't he? But he's got an injury now, but uh, I'm sure he'll be okay. Jerry Taggart, the former Manchester City defender, signed for around £70,000. And he's settled in well at Barnsley. Well, Machen, of course, the former manager of Manchester City. 
And he's got one or two of his ex-players in his side now. Williams. And he might have made more of that. And still they might. Hurst now. It's a good flick off. Oh, great save. Wilson struck it superbly. And, well, Baker's positioning was impeccable. Yeah, that was a good save. Good, good first-time strike from... Uh... Danny Wilson, but all of a sudden we've had three or four situations now, and that's encouraging now. We look as if we're starting to warm to the task a little bit now. Wednesday's confidence beginning to grow. That's a good back flick from Hurst, and he's done very well as Danny Wilson in the support area, as indeed as the goalkeeper. He often fancies a crack from long range, Danny Wilson, and uh, he scored a superb goal down at Bristol City a couple of weeks ago. Glorious move worked by Sheffield Wednesday on that occasion, and Wilson finishing it off. But this time, denied by the goalkeeping and the agility of Clive Baker. Pearson, always a threat on set pieces. And he goes again very strongly. But this time, the danger dies away. Ramble, beaten in the air by Pearson. Williams now with Archdeacon. Sheridan, it's an excellent pass. Hart's on his way now. Hurst in the middle and Wilson too and Williams. And the shot from Francis. That's a good chance, Peter. I just wonder whether Trevor, I mean, he loves those, hitting them first time. Good run by John Harks. He whips across a good ball here. Now, I, th I wonder whether Trevor might have just taken half off this and steadied himself a little bit more. But he scored so many of those in his time, he, you know, he quite fancies himself first time. But that was a good chance. We've had now, within the last five minutes, we've had four very, very good uh, opportunities. Trevor Francis with his eighth club now, including two in Italy, of course. And he's been mainly used as a substitute by Ron this season, but uh, my word, he's done well when he's come on. And he got them back on the road to recovery on Saturday when Ron brought him on after the team had gone 2-0 down. Francis with the first goal. But here's backs now. Good run by Rammel. Found a little bit of space for himself. Backs going in. Pearson lost it. Saville. Now Agnew. That was promising then for Barnsley. And Sheffield Wednesday did well to survive. But now the counter-attack. Led by Sheridan. Again, beginning to warm up now. Here's Williams. Parks. Now Francis. Held it up well, but he couldn't shake off Archdeacon. O'Connell to Agnew. Good jump by Pearson. Doesn't lose too much in the air. Nice with Pearson, the Sheffield Wednesday captain. That was a dreadful back pass then by Tyler. And Hurst lost control. Great situation for that, for us there. I mean, Tyler's played, uh, Tyler's played the ball back blind. Hurst has read the situation, which all strikers should be looking for. And in all fairness, his, his control was very untidy there. That was a good opportunity to miss that. I think he's been a bit frustrating for you, hasn't he, uh, David Hurst up front? Well, he's like that, but he is, he is the sort of, uh, you know, he's still got 13 goals. He got 16 last season. And he'll finish up with 20 this year. O'Connell now for Barnsley. Good cross in. And away by Shirtliff. I think they'll push on Pearson. Indeed, that is the decision of the referee. Nigel Pearson, who you were telling me beforehand, Ron, has been your best player this season. Yes, I think over the course of the season, um, he's defended valiantly, skipped the side well, and... I wish I'd like to have seen him stick his head in the way there, but... Uh, didn't see too much wrong with that, but the ref's eagle eyed. And you're not complaining? Nope. <laughs> Agnew. We're called outside him. Yeah, also Nigel Pearson, as we were saying earlier, has weighed in with a lot of vital goals this year. None more so than Saturday. Brought it back to 2-2 against Ipswich. Now, what can Rammel do here? Carlton Palmer. Agnew. Here's Hurst. Good skill by Hurst. He's got Williams up in support. And in the end, run away by Taggart, who stuck to his task well. 
What an exquisite piece of skill then by David Hurst. Hey, come on! They just score from Peewood Park. As the uh, ball sails in the end, harmless bit wide. Everton leading by a goal to nil, and the scorer, Mike Newell. Everton having a bit of a lean run at the moment, so they'll be hoping to progress in the competition at the expense of Blackburn tonight, so a good start for them. But here, we're still looking for the first goal. Pearson. Shatliff. Williams combining with Hurst. Now Wilson. Sheridan. This is where they look good, Sheffield Wednesday, when they get their passing going. Taggart turning away from trouble. O'Connell. Archdeacon. Shirtlift. Good running here by Hurst. Shooting chance. Well, Baker's lost it. And just got back in time. What a let off then for Barnsley and for Clive Baker. As Hurst suddenly found an opening. That's more like it from Sheffield Wednesday. Worthington's cross towards Hurst and crosses! What a save then by Baker. That's exactly what I've seen about Trevor like he did in the first time. But good movement by Worthington. So the pressure's coming in on Barnsley now. Here's the effort from Hurst, which Baker couldn't hold. And he just nicked it away before Williams got in. A corner then to Sheffield Wednesday. We'll have a look at that other near miss from Trevor Francis in a moment. Worthington with the corner. And Baker was struggling. His lack of height perhaps exposed then. Yes, I'd like to see us exploit that a little bit more. I mean, I'd like to see one of our big guys. Peter Shirtlift did on the last corner, previous corner, he got a touch. But I think it's important we start killing off one or two of those. Here's the corner. Palmer's come up. Didn't quite reach him. Worthington. Wilson Francis who came so close to scoring the opening goal Francis looking to go all the way denied again by Baker and no question at all Clive Baker has come to the rescue now of Barnsley on what three or four occasions and Ron's almost fallen off his stall so the action now is fast and furious Trevor Francis showing all the old style that's made him such a household name in world football. Pearson throw. Wilson back in again. Way by Tyler, only as far as Pearson. Sheffield Wednesday really raising their game now. But away comes Banks. It's well read by Palmer. Parks, Palmer again. And the challenge from Banks and the throw. But here's Trevor Francis. What about this one, Ron? Yes, that's he, he's got, he's done well to get past the defender. The keeper's made he's made two saves in the last few minutes to make amends for uh, maybe the little error off Hurst. He nearly cost their side a goal. So somehow it stays at nil-nil. But you have the feeling there's going to be a goal soon. Yeah, we're a lot more positive now. We've, we've got a little bit some... We're playing some nice pockets of football, and uh, we are at last looking at threat. First ten minutes or so, we didn't really get into any sort of uh, groove. Francis. That's an excellent ball there. First. Now for Sheridan. Two new defenders that time. Hawks now. The American. And Agnew. Ball in possession. Marks again. Now then for Francis. 
trying to drill it in towards Williams and Hurst in the penalty area. O'Connell. Very much impressive play then by O'Connell. And intelligent work too by Palmer. He seems to have settled into that role very well, Ron. Carlton Palmer. Yes, well, of course, he's, he's played a, a, an awful lot of games in the back. Actually, I think that's where he eventually turn out to be um, a central defender. He's played all over, really. He was a right back too at West Brom, wasn't he? Yeah, there's times when he's playing in midfield when he plays all over. He really has got some energy to burn. Agnew. So after that early burst, Barnsley have had to be on the defensive, really, for the last 15 minutes or so. There's Carlton Palmer, record signing from West Bromwich Albion a couple of years ago. Fleming, only as far though as Wilson, on a casual from Fleming. And Tyler had too much pace then for Trevor Francis. What's your, your feeling about Trevor, Ron? Uh, I don't know if you had doubts about bringing him here in the first place. He, of course, was manager of QPR at the time. Well, that's right, but I mean, he's got that priceless thing. He's got, he's got absolute abundance of talent. Good professional, looks after himself very well, and uh, that's why at 37 years of age, or 36, as it said there, 36. he's still playing. <laughs> and playing exceptionally well. I mean, the crowd love him here. And he's so keen, too, isn't he? Very, very determined to, uh, to keep his place. Yeah, I mean, we've been playing now. What have we been playing? 25 minutes? And he may very well on another day have had a hat trick. He still has the old appetite for goal scoring, Trevor Francis. I suppose you might have to think about extra time, Ron, if it goes to, uh, to that stage. But I uh, think there's a fair chance if it goes to extra time, we'd be in the buff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with Zimmer. <laughs> I hope they're not listening to this down there. Francis now. He really is a zest about Trevor Francis. Beaten this time by O'Connell. He's getting through a lot of good work for Barnsley. Archdeacon. Rammel. Held off Hearts, but not shirtless. And rather aimlessly played through then by Ian Banks. And Sheffield Wednesday threatening to take a grip on this first half now. But so far without a goal. Hurst. Looking for Sheridan, there's O'Connell again, that was a foul, surely. Any complaints there, Ron? I wasn't too happy about the way John kicked the ball away. I mean, another referee may not have been so lenient. I mean, we had a player, Nigel Worthington, booked the other day for doing the same thing, and he sometimes say, when will players learn? So, free kick to Barnsley, and a word of warning for John Sheridan. Fleming with the kick. Here's Banks. Promising pass to Archdeacon. A good cross in to Shirtliff, who headed clear. Sheridan now finding Wilson. He's too so often in tandem. Broken up by Agnew. He was a revelation last season. Hasn't quite recaptured that form in the current campaign, but he has been held back by injury. So half an hour gone in the first half, and it's still Sheffield Wednesday nil, Barnsley nil in this Zenith Cup second round tie. Agnew with backs, Archdeacon. O'Connell's made the run outside him, looking for Savile. And Worthington able to let that one run over for a goal kick. Yeah, we have a little bit of a problem in as much as um, O'Connell, Brendan O'Connell there, number seven, um, he's playing in a little free area, sort of, if you like, an old-fashioned inside left position. And he's their spare man in midfield. And very often he's the one, he either sucks John Harks in, which leaves Archdeacon very, very, uh, very, very wide and unmarked on the wing. But he's, he's our number one problem in terms of the position he's occupying at the moment. Savile, Taggart, well read though, once more by Palmer. Pearson. Now for Harks. I'll ask you about young Harks in a moment, Ron, the American who's come to Sheffield Wednesday and settled into the side extremely well. Hurst. Sheridan. Now that for Francis. Again, taking up a useful position. But Fleming is quite clearly fouled then by David Hurst. 
Gary Fleming, who started, of course, with Nottingham Forest before moving on to Manchester City. And there's the tackle again from David Hurst, which was lunging and rather crude. Sheridan. Now Wilson. Here's Williams. Been competing up front for a place with Trevor Francis alongside David Hurst. Paul Williams. Tonight, Ron opting for all three of them. Yeah, it's the first time this season we've started with all three. Um, very often we've finished the game with that when we've been chasing the game. Worthington's cross. Now, oh, O'Connell. Could be a break on here. Palmer momentarily to the rescue. And that was out of play. So how do you think the experiment is, is shaping up with the three of them? Well, there are times um, when players get pulled into false positions, um, which is understandable. It's something we've worked at. We did, we did a fair amount of work at it in Italy on a pre-season tour um, in case we needed to play it. Um, but overall, we've, we've played fairly well. We've, uh, we've, had, we've created good chances. At the, moment, at the moment, we just haven't stuck anything in the back. Well, don't forget, if you do want to make uh, any instructions, the phone is working over there. If you want to phone down to the dugout. Ron did try it out beforehand, and all he got was an answering machine. I said they'd get back to you, but they didn't, did they? Francis with Hawks. It's a promising run. Now Hurst. Here's Francis. We've got five in the penalty area, Sheffield Wednesday here. One, one. And the header aimlessly wide by David Hurst. Trevor Francis, who went on to the managerial ladder with Queen's Park Rangers, but when that went rather sour for him, back to his playing days, and, well, he's certainly got a role to play with Sheffield Wednesday. Wilson with Hurst, now Williams, Hurst, oh! Appeals the penalty, nothing given. The referee shaking his head, but that might have been a penalty and it did look very close I think you'll find it wasn't I think when you find the slow-mo back on here no so we may be overplayed a little bit there because I thought both David and uh, Paul Williams had an opportunity to take a snapshot but uh, some good passing now there's some good passing by both sides and I think we're we're now playing reasonably well Worthington has a good cross and oh yes that's it Hurst has got it at last a breakthrough for Sheffield Wednesday and a lot of positive football has produced the right result, really. Because they've deserved a goal, no question. Worthington's persistence, taking him past the tackle. Yes, happy at that. That's where we want Nigel Worthington and uh, Harksy coming down the flanks. Good ball, nice little loop on by uh, Paul Williams. And David tucks it away. But a good goal, that's started by a good through ball to Worthington. So, relief for Sheffield Wednesday, who have at last taken the lead through David Hurst, their top goal scorer, and that's his 14th of the season. 1-0 to Sheffield Wednesday, set up by that fine run by Nigel Worthington. So that'll settle you down now, Ron. Well, we have settled down. I think that we have played, uh, as we've been saying now, since... Since the opening uh, 10 minutes, we've played relatively well. We've passed the ball around, um, taking the initiative away from, from Barnsley. And the important people and the way we're playing, the important people are our two wide midfield players. It's very, very important they make progress. And we've just seen a, a first-class example. I do think there's, there appears tonight when we put crosses, good crosses into the box, uh, we've got some reward for it. Back now for Barnsley, looking to bounce straight back. Saddle is possessed though by Sheridan. Now Worthington, no, tack it in there first. Dipwell then the big defender. Trying to slot it through, and the interception was by the captain Pearson. David Hurst. Trying to show his pace. Beaten though by Fleming.
And I would think Barnsley now will do well to survive till half time, having conceded just the one goal. And there it is, David Hurst, the scorer, 10 minutes from half time. Another one for Sheffield Wednesday now will make life very difficult for Barnsley, no question. And that's a Barnsley throw. They had that one early chance, Barnsley, for Rammel, but nothing really much since then. And most of the attacking in the first half has come from the home side, Sheffield Wednesday. Palmer, too long though for Francis or Williams. Click on for the goal from Williams and David Hurst, a former Barnsley player, of course, tucking it away. McCord. Towards Rammel, Harks away. Here's Agnew. Barnsley will be looking to some inspiration from Agnew. He's their playmaker in midfield. O'Connell. Now Rammel. No. No joy for him this time. Trevor Francis. O'Connell. Clever play by Bats. Agnew. Now then for Archdeacon. We've got players up here. And Pressman making the catch. Yeah, that's where their most danger comes when they free Archdeacon out on the left-hand side. Um, you know, it's a little bit of a battle of wits now uh, between him and Trevor. Whether Trevor can stay up the field long enough and maybe keep Archdeacon back. Otherwise, you'll find him, the old boy will find himself. He's going to do an awful lot of chasing uh, there, number 11. And at 36 or 37, depending who you believe. Sheridan. This is Shirtliff. Williams. Sheffield Wednesday throw. Worthington. Good crosser of a ball. But it was Tyler who climbed the highest. Francis now. Trying to set up some space for himself. The referee didn't think that was a foul. And the referee was certainly well placed. O'Connell. Agnew trying to send Archdeacon on his way. And there to tidy up once more Carlton Palmer, who's had a very impressive first half. Well, David Pleat is also watching this game with us, of course, from the studio. David, what are your thoughts so far on the first half? Yes, I think Sheffield are playing neat, tidy football. They haven't got their usual four-man midfield. And considering there's three men up front, sometimes it's very difficult for three men to dovetail together to play as one mind. Uh, certainly, Williams and Hurst have been playing very well as a twosome. Did last week at Derby particularly well. Um, but the three forwards have extended Barnsley at the back. And I feel unless Agnew and Banks can go on and support Rammel and Savile much better uh, than Wednesday are going to keep the play penned in in the Barnsley half. And Mel Machin will be pleased to get to half-time, um, only one goal down. Thank you, David. And we'll hear from David Pleat a little later on in the game. Savile. Gave it away, though. Now Hurst. He's clear of Archdeacon. Francis has pulled away to the far post. Here's Francis now. Great control. Taggart able to clear, but straight at Worthington. And they put themselves back in trouble here at Barnsley, and they were rather lucky to get away with that. And how superbly Francis controlled that cross. That was genuine class. Yes, I've been well pleased with our build-up play at the moment. We've started... Uh, we've got to be careful. Carlton Palmer's got to concentrate um, because sides can be at the most uh, vulnerable, as we found out once or twice this season, um, when they're controlling the game. Archdeacon trying to thread it on. Rammel's flick. But they haven't posed you too many problems, really, since that early burst run. No, that's right. I think what we've done, we've, we've established ourselves in midfield a little bit, and uh, that's stopped people like Agnew, Banks and Archdeacon, who were doing exceptionally well early on. 
So what will your mood be at half-time when you go in the dressing room? Relatively happy, uh, particularly if it stays at this, um, or, go in, or indeed we increase it. But, you know, we've got to be careful that we don't get into a, a little bit of a... Go flat. And Ron will be going down to the dugout for the second half. So any phone calls for you up here, Ron, I'll pass them on. I'll be quite honest with you, I quite like it up here. It's it's a good, it's a hell of a good vantage spot, is this? Well, you can stay here if you want to. Right. It's up to you. I always remember Dave Sexton when he was manager of Chelsea used to do that, didn't he? He used to be in that crow's nest at Stamford Bridge. Well, we've had this conversation before about how you can see the game properly from down on the bench. There's Worthington's cross, too long this time. And Wilson's prepared to chase it. Such a hard-working, industrious player, Danny Wilson. And it's going to be a goal kick. It's only two minutes to half-time, I'm told, Ron, so uh, I think you're going to make the tea or something. <laughs> Who does the talking at half-time? Does Richie Barker join in, your assistant, or do you do most of it now? No, I'll do most of it, but there won't be a lot to be said. It'll just be reminders more than anything else at half-time. Right, well, we'll hear from you later. Have a safe journey down the stairs. Thank you. Tommy gets down there, they'll be 2-1 down, actually. Wednesday, batting themselves out of trouble as Ron Atkinson leaves the commentary box. There he goes. I wonder if he knows the way. He's not got his glasses on, he might not. Meantime, the game is going on, and this is Hawks for Sheffield Wednesday. Hawks rode the tackle so well there. On from Sheridan, and a promising move dies away. John Sheridan, the Republic of Ireland international, whose career has been revived at Sheffield Wednesday after it all went rather flat at Nottingham Forest. He didn't get in the first team there. Brian Clough wouldn't pick him. But he certainly has a prominent role to play at Hillsborough. Rammel. O'Connell. There's a foul that though by Pearson. So free kick to Barnsley, hoping to end the first half with a flourish. Backs, all the flags up for offside against Savile. Latest news of Ron Atkinson, he was last seen in the car park getting into his car. Now, Ron will be in the dressing room in a minute or so, hoping to pass on a few words of wisdom to his players, and then, as I was saying, he'll be in the, or on the trainer's bench for the second half, and we'll hear from him again then. Indeed, throughout that second 45 minutes. And don't forget, if it is a draw at the end of 90 minutes, then it's extra time, and if they still can't settle it, it'll be down to penalties. O'Connell, rather tentatively though. And that was a late tackle by Danny Wilson that caught Owen Archdeacon. Now Ron is now in the dugout. I think we might be able to see him. So he'll be, uh, there he is, just having a quick word with Richie Barker, his assistant. Checking that it's still 1-0. Very popular here at Hillsborough. Ron, he's done a superb job. And they've played a lot of attractive football this season, which has earned them some rave reviews on the second division scene. And indeed in the Rumbleys Cup too, which they're progressing well in. So, the final whistle from the first 45 minutes. And there is the man who has scored the only goal so far, David Hurst, after 35 minutes, after a lot of promising attacks from Sheffield Wednesday. That was their reward. Barnsley, well, just that one early scare, really when Rammel had a chance, and since then they've had to defend, and they've done so pretty well, but not well enough, because Sheffield Wednesday are leading here at half-time by a goal to nil, and we shall be back, of course, after a very short break from now, so join us again. The 
Secret Video Show, Wednesday at 7.30 on Sky One. I got my woodpecker something for his ego. And I got myself a uh, Holston Pills. It says serve chilled. So I figured I'd take it to Antarctica. That's a, that's a nice place. The night's there last six months. So you can fly out on Friday, stay two years, and still be on time for work Monday morning. They say this is the original pills. They don't fool me. I saw another one just like it in the fridge. Aftershave for men. I became infected from an old boyfriend who had injected drugs. I was HIV positive five years before I found out. Obviously, I, I had sex during that time, but I didn't use a condom. I didn't think I needed to. I only had two boyfriends, and um, I didn't think I'd taken any risk at all, uh, so I didn't use condoms. Um, we were just perfectly ordinary. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. For more information, phone the National AIDS Helpline, free, on 0800-567-123. Welcome back to Zenith, the Data Systems Cup, second round. It's Sheffield Wednesday 1, Barnsley nil. Uh, it's been uh, one-way traffic, really, hasn't it, David? Particularly after the first ten minutes where they were just, um, in the words of the man in charge of the whole game, I think they waited the, for the kickoff off uh, for Ron Atkinson to give his signal from above. Um, yeah, Barnsley have been passive. Um, they've took the strain of Wednesday's superior passing and team play, but I don't feel they've counter-attacked with any venom. And I think the fact that they haven't con uh, had a corner yet is, is reflective of that. The goal came in the 35th minute, but it might have been uh, earlier, in fact, if uh, the goalkeeper, Clive Baker, hadn't uh, recovered himself. It was a, a bit of a cock-up. Yes, well, you, you could say that. He, um, <laughs> when Hurst drives through here, he didn't get, really get hold of it. He parried it and then uh, just got the ball away for a corner. Um, his handling is a little bit suspect on the cross balls, but he's very good at parrying shots and getting behind. He's got a good frame, uh, but he's just probably lacking a couple of inches to deal with the uh, high balls into the box. And it's nice to see Trevor Francis in action. It's uh, quite an advertisement for 36-year-olds, I would say. Yes, he, he had... he's... He's got golden boots, uh, Matthew. He's got lovely guile and vision, and when he's, when he's got the ball, you feel it's in safe hands. He's got such neat feet. When he cut inside O'Connell there, I mean, it was a splendid uh, piece of thinking to quickly pick out his shot. Um, he's, he's a bright uh, fellow, and to be playing at 36, 37, whatever on stage he suggests he is, <laughs> he's doing terrific, uh, Francis. He's a credit to his profession. As you say, after the first 10 minutes, um, we were only just waiting for the goal, and eventually it came in the 35th minute. It was down to David Hurst, and a nice build-up, really. Yes, yeah, it wasn't too surprising. It was a fine ball played inside, I believe, of Banks. When uh, Worthington crossed, it's flicked on, and then I just felt at one stage that he'd risen just a shade too early, and it might have hit the bar, but he, he just managed to get over it, and um, the goalkeeper had no chance. I mean, a very fair reflection on the first half, and indeed, as I say, Machin will be pleased that they're no further in arrears. Yeah, there it is again, though, from a different angle. Yeah, it's a, it's a good ball. He crosses a clean ball there, and it's just flicked on. 
and as I say, the goalkeeper is completely stranded, and I just felt that he might have gone too early, but he managed to keep it down well enough, and a uh, despairing dive, a good effort by the goalkeeper, but um, a deserved goal. If you were Mel Meachin, what would you be saying to your players now? Um, you might as well lose 3-0 as 1-0. You've got to go forward and, and call a few shots. You're allowing Wednesday's superior passing to dictate the pace of the game. They've got to pressure better. Uh, Rammel and uh, Saville up front are almost lone mariners there. They need to push on. Agnew needs to go and show his abilities more in the Wednesday half than picking it up deep off the, uh, the defence. Uh, Banks too, he has a fine shot. So far he hasn't had one effort at goal. Uh, Archdeacon can cross a ball, and I think, and I think Ron Atkinson senses it by one or two comments he made, that if, At if uh, Archdeacon gets the ball, he's got the ability to diddle and weave past people and cross good balls. And at the moment, Archdeacon isn't getting forward enough and using his ability to the best advantage. Well, they're only a goal down. I think some might say they're lucky just to be that one goal down. So it's still everything to play for. We'll be back with the whole of the second half live in just a moment. In a tough, real world. How many more assaults is this guy going to get away with before somebody does something to stop him? These are the public defenders. You're supposed to be my friend. I am your friend. And I want to help you beat him, kick him, attack him. Men and women dedicated to the law. These flowers are not for me. These flowers are for somebody who has a personal life. Doing battle with the chaos on the streets. The boy was on his knees, begging for mercy. Fighting for your rights. <laughs> If you were looking for an easy indictment, you picked the wrong case. Justice, at last on television. What? <laughs> Equal Justice, coming soon to Sky One. Okay, dear, you've got yourself a case. Check Alaskan oil. I don't care whose friend he is, he used phony numbers. Fire him. Pull over. It got better. It's all right. You've got yourself a lift. Get in. Would you like a drink? Armagnac, 1929. Cost me 600 bucks. One marriage and two ulcers. <laughs> what is an ulcer? What's an ulcer? What's an ulcer? You should meet my wife. <laughs> get a bunged up nose and a sore throat. You feel like your nose belongs to someone else and your throat isn't your own. Double trouble. To treat your cold, Lockett's has a unique double action. Outside penetrating menthol to help clear your nose, inside a liquid honey center to soothe your throat, making you feel like your old self again. For double trouble, double action Lockett's help clear your nose and soothe your throat. This is Ambrose the cat. Oh, looks harmless, but his natural animal savagery and his wild, ferocious nature make him a creature to be feared. There's only one way to tame him. Ambrosia Devon custard. You just pour it out and heat it up. You can't make a quicker or creamier tasting custard than Ambrosia. Try it on your favorite dish. Delicious Ambrosia custard. Devon knows how they make it so creamy. Good day. I made a Christmas present for you. Have a look. Dean is a born thief. That's my angel, all right. Terry Dean is not your typical angel. I wouldn't go telling anyone you're an angel. He's a bit unorthodox. But why would Willie Nelson rob a bank? All the girls I'm full of. But he is an angel. Crocodile Dundee was almost a legend. <laughs> now, Paul Hogan is almost an angel.
Welcome back. We'll be back at Hillsborough in just a minute for the second half, live and uninterrupted. But before we do, let's have a look at the latest scores in the other Zenith Data Systems Cup matches going on tonight. They're all second round and mostly half-time. Uh, Blackburn nil, Everton 1. Mike Newell, the scorer, in the fifth minute for Everton. And it's Crystal Palace 1, Bristol Rovers 1. Rovers went ahead in the 30th minute through Tony Pounder, but Andy Gray got one back for Palace in the 47th minute. And, of course, that's the score here at Hillsborough. Sheffield Wednesday 1, Barnsley 0. David Hurst, the man to hit the target for Wednesday after 35 minutes. Well, David Pleat with me. Uh, we reckon that Barnsley have got some work to do in this second half. Yes, they've got to be a little bit more positive. Uh, they mustn't be in awe. I'm sure they're not in awe, but uh, they've allowed Wednesday to dictate the pace of the game. You sense Ron Atkinson in the first ten minutes wasn't happy that they didn't pick up a pace, a momentum quick enough, Wednesday, the home team. And that was an opportunity for Barnsley, maybe, to, to go for it more. But they sat and they allowed Wednesday to slowly get into the game, a game which in the latter minutes they've dominated. Uh, well, the goal when it came was nicely taken. I think we can have another look at it, actually, here. David Hurst, the scorer, after a, a nice build-up down the left. Yes, it was a splendid ball, and Worthington just edged his way in front. They may be semi-fortunate there. Bad marking in the middle, to be fair, Archdeacon, um, natural winger. He should have been tucked in a little bit more, at least making a physical challenge on Hurst. Um, but those balls which get flicked on from the near post area, they're, they're nightmares to deal with. Well, nightmares, uh, I'm afraid, are uh, an opposite word, actually, when you talk about Hillsborough. And Paul Dempsey has been uh, down to the Leppings Lane end of the ground, and this is his piece. How fitting that at the end of this sporting year of 1990, we return to Hillsborough, 1990, the year when English football regained its lost spirit, we hope. The year before had been its blackest ever. And one April day, and this terracing behind me at Leppings Lane, there was due testament to the problems facing English football and society at large, 95 Liverpool fans losing their lives. Today, when we arrived at the ground, there were only three people inside this footballing cathedral. They were three Liverpool fans paying a private tribute to one they'd loved and lost that day. Since that day, no football fans have stood on Leppings Lane. The Liverpool fans are gone, but not forgotten. Not forgotten indeed. As we then prepare for the second half, in this Zenith Cup second round tie, Sheffield Wednesday about to start the second half, leading by the goal from David Hurst after 35 minutes. And just as we await the kickoff, down at the side, we have now Edmund Hughes talking with Paul Dempsey. Evelyn. You look warm, I hope you're warm. You haven't had to come far for this game tonight. You're no, just a local boy now. I live in Sheffield. Yeah, I come every week here uh, to see Sheffield Wednesday and I go every other week to see uh, Sheffield United. Enjoy the first half? I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't think it was a very, very good game. I thought that uh, Barnsley have come here to get a draw out of the game, um, which they might yet do because the left wing has caused all sorts of problems. He's put in three or four great crosses. Well, that, although has... there has to be a winner tonight one way or the other. Yes, there has, yes. Uh, there's got to be uh, a winner because it does go to penalties. But uh, I honestly feel that uh, Sheffield Wednesday should win it. Oh, and I must say, whenever I meet a guy like yourself with Liverpool and inexperience or Bobby Moore, I can't help thinking what a shame that you're not giving more in, in terms of a commitment now. That's right. I mean, uh, I, I love football. I come every week to any game I'll go and see, and I enjoy watching football. I enjoy commenting about football because I think ex-players have a great deal to offer the game yet, and if only they could get in in some capacity on the FA side of it, they must be able to help because they've played the game, seen the game, done it, been in situations that players are in now in every, every day of their working careers. They knew what was going on. Before I let you get back in the wall, give us a quick prediction. 2-1. Uh, to Wednesday. To Wednesday. You have to say that you're a local. <laughs> Good to see you. Cheers. <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks very much. Emmett Hughes, the old Liverpool and England stalwart, predicting a 2-1 win then for Sheffield Wednesday. And they certainly have been dominating the game after that uh, brief spell early on when Barnsley threatened. And Ron Atkinson in the second half then will be in the dugout and will be coming to Ron for comments from time to time. There he is. Wondering if he's going to have such a good view down there as he had up here on the gantry. It certainly is a perfect view high up above the halfway line. And he's seen his team play pretty well. And David Hurst goal dividing the two teams. And just to confirm, it has to be settled tonight. So if it's extra time, we'll then have to have penalties if they still can't settle it. 
but for the moment Sheffield Wednesday very much in the driving seat and Barnsley as David Pleat was saying have got to be positive in the second half they've got to commit players forward they might just as well lose 3-0 as well loose pass was from Taggart now Harks and Francis Williams and Hurst both in the middle Francis decides to go it alone wins the corner and I think a look of disgust from David Hurst who felt he should have pulled the ball back and maybe Trevor now might agree with him it was a wasted opportunity really because Barnsley were caught upfield and Trevor Francis of all people didn't take full advantage Shirtliff has come up they do have the corner to be taken by Worthington and that was just headed away at the last. Court appearance by Taggart. Palmer. Here's Williams. Released by Tyler. Now for Sheridan. Good build up here by Wednesday. Francis wriggling free of the tackles. possess a pretty powerful shot from long range Ian Banks as he's revealed down the years Mark Smith on as a substitute for Barnsley at the start of the second half wearing number 14 former Sheffield Wednesday player looking round, I think they've abandoned the sweeper but no, here's Fleming taking the throw so he hasn't gone off but they do seem to have changed the system we'll work that out for you in a moment Banks certainly showing some purpose there Pressman having to tip it over the top Trick, remember, in the last round, Ian Banks to clinch the tie away to West Brom. And he extended Pressman there. So a corner at last for Barnsley. Taken by Archdeacon. We had a good first half, Archdeacon. Posed a lot of problems. He's hoping to do so again here. Ooh, Palmer let it go. Oh, my word, he was living dangerously then, Carlton Palmer. And I think Ron Atkinson almost fell out of the dugout there. Oh, he's out of it. Tie undone. Totally immersed in the occasion here. Free kick to Sheffield Wednesday. Well, they have let games slip this season Wednesday. So they need to keep things tight at the back if they're to maintain this lead. It's only a slender one. Fleming. Well, Ron Atkinson, I think you can hear me now down on the bench. Uh, David Pleat was saying at half-time the need for Barnsley to be more positive, and they certainly seem to be looking that way at the moment. Yeah, we had two or three situations. Uh, Trevor Francis had a couple um, that looked good efforts, but now they, they're, they're camped in our box a little bit, and they, you know, what we mustn't do... <laughs> is concede a goal, score, that's for sure. <laughs> We've got to get back on the ball and start passing it around a bit, but uh, they're having a spell now where they're, they're playing very compact. Um, they push their midfield players in behind the front and they've got people like Agnew and uh, Banks who are very capable of launching shots Smith now with a cross in 
Now Banks, who's already tested Pressman. What about the view down there, Ron? Can you see as much? Strangely enough, um, I know this is a moot point amongst uh, media people, but quite honestly, it was a lot better situation to watch the game in first half up there. It really was. I mean, here now, it's it's flat level, um, but there are there are other things you can do uh, here, and that is uh, sweat. <laughs> swear? <laughs> no, not swear, sweat. <laughs> and have anxious moments and uh, generally get it, try and get involved with them. Um, but at the moment, the, the last two or three minutes have been a little bit testing for us. You know, it's, as you, I've just heard you say about slender leads and um, what we're not doing in it, just in this little spell, I mean, the first three or four minutes after half-time, we, we may have had a goal with the goal. But now we just not be able to relieve pressure enough. That's Savile's cross. OK, Ron, Archdeacon. Hitting it on the volley and straight into the back of supporters behind the goal. But at last, some work for Kevin Pressman to do in the Sheffield Wednesday goal. Very highly rated young goalkeeper. Indeed, Ron was quoted as saying earlier in the season he wouldn't swap him for any other keeper in the Football League. So that's high praise indeed. On from Saville. Certainly a little bit more zip about Barnsley at the start of the second half. Wilson now, though, for Sheffield Wednesday. Now Williams, shooting chance. And Baker just held on to the cross. Williams opting to pull it back with Hurst coming in. Parks, now Wilson. Wednesday hoping to produce the free-flowing football that has earned them such good reports this season. Shirtliff at the back. And here's Williams again, we can see on the replay. Pulling it back and Baker sprawling across. Williams now. Looked like a foul by Taggart, who feeds his innocence. He's a big, burly fellow and there was no way then that Williams could go past him. Paul Williams, who's proving an excellent signing from Charlton, came to replace Delian Atkinson, who, of course, went off to Spain and to Real Sociedad. Wilson with the free kick. Baker off the post! That was a tremendous save then by Baker. Feeling backwards to push the header. And he certainly saved his team then from going further behind. Who's header? Let it run, let it run. In the meantime, the ball has uh, gone out of play, but that was flipped onto the post then. First with the header. And very unlucky then not to have scored his second goal. Now Wilson. Sheffield Wednesday looking to take up the charge again. This time Taggart was back defending. Ten minutes into the second half. Wednesday still one up. But it could have been more. Archdeacon. Rammel. Now Agnew. David Pete hoping to see more of Agnew in an attacking role in the second half. He was saying at half time. I think I go along with that too. He's such a dangerous player when he does come forward, Agnew. And here he is now, into the danger zone with Rammel, and Palmer just nicked it off his toes in time. Andy Rammel, former Manchester United reserve, signed for £100,000 by Barnsley after he'd gone to United from the non-league side. Atherston, Agnew involved in the build-up.
Shetliff. This is Agnew. And quite clearly, Barnsley feel they can have a say in this one yet. Banks now. Saville. Fleming. That's O'Connell. Lump though by Palmer. And fairly so, says the referee. So, no free kick, which Barnsley were claiming. Just to confirm the switch in the second half, it's Brian McCord who's gone off with uh, Mark Smith on. Mark Smith wearing 14 and 10 years he spent at Hillsborough, so they know all about him here. Taggart got the foot in before Williams. Trevor Francis. Sheridan had pulled away outside him. Delightfully played it to Hurst. Here's Sheridan's cross now. Smith. Rather fortuitously away. Helped on by Banks to Agnew. Banks again. Barnsley looking to take the game now to Sheffield Wednesday. Saville linking up with O'Connell, and Rammel came flying in, and he can only have been inches away from that one. Had a great spell when he started at Barnsley. Andy Rammel, he got seven goals in his first ten full games for them, and a bit of a lean spell lately, but hoping to get back on the score sheet there. Andy Rammel, an England under-21 international. Smith under pressure from Williams. So let's have a word now from David Pleat on how he thinks the second half is shaping up. David? Well, quite obviously, Mel Majin had a few words to say. Barnsley are playing far more positively. Uh, they're denying space to Sheridan. He had a lot of room first half to call the shots, make the passes and uh, they're pushing more people into the box, they've already had a few efforts at goal, and uh, they'll be buoyed by their early start in this half. There's always a danger, of course, that, that Wednesday can break, and I do detect um, a little bit of a problem for Barnsley when Wednesday have set plays outside the box, uh, when they're piling the big men forward in close to the goalkeeper. But uh, Barnes will be pleased with this start, they're playing, it's nice to see two teams playing neat and tidy football along the ground, but they're certainly far more aggressive, far more positive, and they're denying that vital space that a team like Wednesday, or a passing side, need to play in if they're going to be successful. Thank you, David. We'll pick up the play now with Rammel. Didn't find back, so... Wilson snapping in with the tackle. Here's Mark Smith, as I was saying, a very popular figure at his time with the Sheffield Wednesday club, now wearing the red of Barnsley. Fleming. Here's Smith now. Looking to send Saville away. Fleming. A good run by him, too. Laid off by Rammel, Archdeacon driving it through, and a goal! An equaliser from Archdeacon. And that was superbly struck then. He can't believe it, Ron. Cracking drive by Archdeacon. It was an excellent piece of approach play. Fleming very much involved. Laid off by Rammel, and Archdeacon shot. Sneaking through, Pressman got a hand to it. But he couldn't keep it out. And suddenly, it's back to 1-1 now. Fleming.
Queen's run. Rammel's touch. Archdeacon with a stunning finish. Pressman will be disappointed. Ron Eckerson was watching that on the monitor, so he's had another look at it. I don't think he was too pleased. Sheridan. Wednesday hoping to retaliate quickly and restore their lead. Sheridan will have to do better than that. So Barnsley coming out in the second half with renewed vigour. And they've been rewarded with an equaliser. Scored by Owen Archdeacon. 1-1. That's his third goal of the season. Well, Ron's uh, listening to me now, I think. Uh, what about the goal then, Ron? Yes, well, having looked at it again on the replay as well, um, not, uh, not, uh, not totally happy. We didn't close the, the lad out, Archdeacon, to start with. Um, they've been threatening a little bit. They've passed the ball around outside our penalty box. Didn't close it out. Um, don't think Kevin will be very happy in goal. I think he'll feel that he should have saved that. Got a hand to it, but not enough. Yeah, it just shows the importance, like the situation before when... Um, when David Hurst hit the, pose, hit the bar from the free kick hell. How important that second goal is at one nothing. you never safe, are you? You certainly aren't. Um, I mean, what we've done now, we've given them hope. Um, we've looked... We've looked as if we had the chance to get back to, you know, to take a two-goal lead. We haven't, and uh, quite frankly, no. It's it's a question of psychologically, it's a big up for them. In and fairness to Barnsley, Ron, they look a different side in the second half. Well, they've had a bit of play. In all fairness, they haven't greatly troubled us. They they threw a cross in just before that that uh, gave us a little bit of a problem. Um, but the best situations have fallen to us this half. Um, you know, Trevor's had two two good uh, opportunities to maybe increase the lead. I say the one Hurstie's hit the bar with, um, and now all of a sudden, you know, they've, they've had a hell of a lift. We're going to have to show a lot of character now. Do you want to come back up here? You're winning up here. Talk to you later. Sheridan now. Francis. He's got Worthington in support, and he's found him too. Flick on from Williams, Agnew. The Barnsley player down injured. Good save, though, again by Baker, this time from Sheridan, and Baker sportingly kicking the ball out of play. Here's Sheridan's shot again. And Baker in the right place once more. Ian Banks in the wars didn't have too clear a view of that but he, uh, he went crashing down in the meantime Sheffield Wednesday also uh, warming up a couple of substitutes Steve McCall and Phil King on the bench for Sheffield Wednesday tonight and there they are Phil King who's been a regular in the side the uh, ginger haired fellow there and Steve McCall the former Ipswich defender Well, Bax is back on his feet, able to resume. So Barnsley back to full strength. And play restarting with the drop ball, Sheridan and Agnew. Agnew now. Sheridan wins it back for Sheffield Wednesday. Hurst. On for Francis. And just look at him battling there with Taggart. Francis, very angry, he felt he was being held off. He wants a penalty, a free kick, anything. He's got a free kick. He was certainly being brushed aside then by the much larger figure of Jerry Taggart. So a dangerous situation here. Clyde Baker organising the Barnsley rear guard. Worthington will take the free kick. Pearson has come up. So has Shirtliff. The two markers at the back and Palmer's in there too. So there's a lot of height in there. Wilson and O'Connell sliding in for Barnsley and it's becoming quite a fierce cup tie now Taggart clashing with Palmer Wilson and that was very uh, late then from Wilson on O'Connell 
the referee was quickly in to afford any possible flare-up. But it's getting rather lively now, and Barnsley right back in the frame. Palmer's pass, and that's Taggart, safety back to Baker. But the Barnsley fans certainly with something to cheer about now in the second half. And whatever manager Mel Machen had to say at half-time, it's done the trick. And he is still sporting his cap. Parks for Francis now. Being booed by the Barnsley fans, Francis. Not quite sure why. He was certainly uh, the victim of that uh, recent tackle by Taggart. Agnew now. Goes down quickly by Sheridan. Here's Francis. He won't mind the jeering. Too, too much experience, Trevor Francis, to worry about that. The shot from Sheridan was charged down. First, it's got to be the second, yes! First has done it. Denied earlier by the Woodwork, but not this time. That's goal number two for David Hurst. And almost a smile from the manager. A thumbs up from Ron and David Hurst. With another clinical piece of finishing has put Sheffield Wednesday back in front. Sheridan with the first effort that was blocked. And how quickly Wednesday responded here. Fleming got caught in possession. Lovely turn. And Hurst tucks it away. No danger. So a test of character now for Barnsley. Can they respond? Fleming in towards Saville. Comfortably saved, though, by Pressman. So the confirmation that David Hurst, two goals, have put Sheffield Wednesday back in control here. And, Ron, you've had a look at the goal again. What were your thoughts on that? Yes, full marks, um, those are the unsung things. The, uh, the way... The way Nigel Worthington went and put uh, pressure on one of their defenders when they looked to have tidied up the situation. And full marks, OK. Great finish. Great finish by Hursty. Um, he gets criticised, but that was a terrific finish. Um, but Nigel Worthington and Sheridan, in terms of perseverance in closing the ball down there, must take an awful lot of credit. As it was Worthington who forced the error from, from Fleming, it came off him into the path of David Hurst. And, uh, well, he certainly did tuck it away delightfully. So... Relief once more for Ron Atkinson with his team leading by two goals to one. Nigel Worthington playing a prominent role. On from Francis. Archdeacon, whose goal briefly put Barnsley on level terms. Francis. Agnew to Banks. Much better second half though from Barnsley. And their supporters here will be hoping they can bounce back once more. Trevor Francis looking for Sheridan. Is Harks. Wilson. Hurst looking for his hat trick now. O'Connell at Smith. Saville, and he had Archdeacon in a lot of space over on that left if he could have found him. Sheridan trying to send Williams away. Good competitive cup tie, though. And still, Barnsley in there fighting. But this is Sheridan. Looking for Hurst. And safely over from Barnsley's point of view for the goal kick. Some heroic saves tonight from Clive Baker, but beaten twice now by David Hurst. On from Rammel, Shirtliff pumping it upfield. 
Williams hoping to profit from that pass by John Harks. Oh, Worthington has to fetch it. Francis, lovely skill again. Wilson now. Here's O'Connell. Rammel. And Sheridan. And he proves some good defensive duties then. John Sheridan, very much a feature of Sheffield Wednesday's revival this season after they were, of course, relegated from the first division. Hurst, looking to take on Smith, he's got round him too. Almost reached Williams, and Francis couldn't keep his shot down. Well, a rueful smile from the old maestro. Hurst did so well here, though. Got away from Smith, had time to look up, and it's just beyond Williams there. And Francis spoons it over the bar. But still looking very dangerous up front, David Hurst. His backs going through. He's way off target, but he was allowed to run a long, long way, which I shouldn't think Ron was too happy about. And I think he's just telling them exactly that. Okay, all right. As long as we have somebody out there. Push right up, buddy. Peter. Shetliff. Carlton Palmer. Pushed in by Taggart. Can be a little rugged at times. Jerry Taggart. Free kick to Sheffield Wednesday, leading 2-1. Shirtliff taking the free kick, finds Williams. Another good match from Williams, he really has impressed this season. Francis now, just too many defenders in the end for him. O'Connell. And Fleming brings it away for Barnsley. Time for Pearson. So far, as Ron was saying, for the Wednesday's man of the season, Nigel Pearson. Barnsley free kick. Fifteen minutes of the match remaining. Can Barnsley come back again and force this game into extra time? Carl Tyler. Wilson, under pressure from Banks, he's giving it away to Agnew. And where's he going? Absolutely nowhere. Sheridan, and he spotted Baker out of his six-yard area. Well, it was a clever piece of play. It might just have produced a sensational goal. So much creativity about this Sheffield Wednesday midfield with Sheridan and Wilson. And, of course, Worthington, too, over on the left. Pearson now. Francis won't reach it this time. Composed defending by Tyler. News from Ewood Park in the Zenith Cup tie there. And Everton, oh, well in control. 3-0 they lead. Mike Newell in the first half and further goals from Tony Cotty and Dave Watson to give them... A very convincing hold on the game. Baxter Rammel. Barnsley still persevering. Now Mark Smith. This is Tyler. Fair tackle by Pearson. Decides the referee. Wilson. And he has Francis in support. With Hurst waiting, hoping in the middle. Wilson. Very brave at Danny Wilson. Worthington. Francis knocks it back in and away for the corner. Still full of running, Trevor Francis, for all his advancing years. I think he wants to take the corner too, but Nigel Worthington's gone over there. Francis taking it quickly to Harks. 
Wilson. Agnew. And his spectacular clearance. Has only given the ball to Hearts. Palmer now. And is that another corner? It is. So it's a strong period of pressure here. That was Peter Shirt. They're breaking through from the back. And I think he's given, uh, well, the arm is up. It must be obstruction. Certainly an indirect free kick anyway. So a serious problem here for Barnsley to deal with. Worthington is there and Francis. Played in for Hurst. He's got the sniff of a hat trick now. And he's pulling out all the stops to find this third goal. Well flighted in. And no challenging header. Hurst over the bar. Well on course, David Hurst with 15 goals now to beat his best ever previous tally. That was 16, so he hasn't got too many to go now. Archdeacon on the breakthrough. Scorer of the first goal. And the second one too. It's a fabulous goal by Archdeacon. The Wednesday defenders caught totally stranded then. And Archdeacon with a classic strike. Brings it back to 2-2. Sprinting clear. And how's this for inventive finishing? Pressman struggling to reach it. And that's a great goal. Archdeacon bursting clear. Palmer can't catch him. And he had time to look up. And that will go down as one of the goals of the season. It's 2-2. Francis now for Sheffield Wednesday. Twice they've been pegged back. Parks. Sheridan. Very nearly fell then for Williams. What a cup tie we have on now. Worthington to Williams. He should have done better then. Well, Machen. His team now right back in this game. Twice they've gone behind. Twice they've replied in the best possible way. Came, of course, from Manchester City earlier this year, and he's doing an excellent job too in reviving the fortunes of Barnsley. Just hearing now 4 0 Everton leading Blackburn at Ewood Park, so it's a good night so far for Howard Kendall's team. Dave Watson with his second goal on the night. Worthington, too long for Hurst. Up goes Francis. And the Barnsley hero, Archdeacon, clearing away. Two goals from Archdeacon tonight. Two from David Hurst. Ron Atkinson, that's got to be a very bitter blow for you, but it was some goal, Ron. Yes, uh, four marks to Archdeacon. Great goal, great goal. He read the script well, picked up the header, showed in a great acceleration and finished brilliantly. Um, just at a time when, in all fairness, it looked like he was going to 3-1 again, so... You know, if I, was, if I was making a prediction on this, I wouldn't like to. <laughs> but we're showing lots of commitment, lots of character. We're still in there. You've got a couple of subs uh, that you can bring on, Ron, but, of course, the prospect of extra time looming now. Well, that's right. I mean, I'm, I've just made up my mind that I'm going to stick with the side now, unless anything else happens, um, until maybe into extra time. Well, we'll see what happens here from this free kick. Worthington to take it. Rammel got it out. Wilson... Deacon back there defending now. Having played his part with such gusto at the other end. A memorable goal from Archdeacon to add to his earlier one. Pearson. Williams feels for handball, nothing given. Pearson. An important header away by Taggart. But shirt left now. It was her shot that was charged down, Tyler away, Worthington got it through, and Francis hoping to get on the end of it. But extra time there could now be. Didn't look that way for a long time with Sheffield Wednesday on top, 
But all credit to Barnsley for the way that they've battled back in this second half. Shatliff. Acres of space here for Pearson. Now Harks. Rather turned back into trouble though. Archdeacon teasing and tormenting. Is that a storming match for Barnsley? Carlton Palmer now. Can Wednesday raise their game once again? Max in with the saving tackle. Fleming to Smith. Now Agnew. Quite happy just to calm things down. It's Pearson having to chase here. And the Sheffield Wednesday captain. Now looking for Williams. Sheridan here. Williams had turned away from him. Taggart. Agnew. Barnsley playing with a lot of confidence now, as you'd expect after their rally. It's Taggart. Playing the ball around. Smith with Tyler. And Sheffield Wednesday can't get the ball back off them. Smith now. This is Sheridan. Williams linking up with Francis in towards Hurst and Shirtliff. Baker was there. He looks a bit exhausted now, Trevor Francis, but still persevering. And as Ron Atkinson was saying, there won't be any substitution before the 90 minutes are up. Both those Sheffield Wednesday substitutes are still warming up down below us. But we won't be seeing them yet then. Agnew with a free kick for Barnsley. Bax, on a tired piece of play by Bax, who's worked extremely hard for Barnsley. Taggart, out in for Fleming. Shirtliff. Wellington to Palmer. Nobody wants to make a mistake now with extra time very close. Tyler. Archdeacon. Feels for offside and it's given. As Francis endeavours to sweep it in, the flag was up anyway. Four minutes left, Sheffield Wednesday 2, Barnsley 2, this Yorkshire derby in the Zenith Cup second round. Fleming. O'Connell, hoping to make the run for him. Checked though by Worthington. Now here's Palmer. I think if he'd have made a mess of it, <laughs> Ron wouldn't have been so happy. Didn't look too happy anyway. Palmer knew what he was doing, Ron. Smith letting it run through to Baker. Both teams looking for a good run in the competition this year. Sheffield Wednesday having gone out to Middlesbrough last season and Barnsley 
2-2 leads United. Middlesbrough, of course, going on to the final before losing to Chelsea. No problem for Pressman. Shot by Rammel. Who scored with his first touch in league football, Andy Rammel, earlier in the season, when he came on as a substitute against Blackburn. Francis. Easy for Taggart. O'Connell, a little lucky to get away with that. But off he goes now, with the best of speed. Still O'Connell. Sheridan winning that little battle with Agnew. Hurst. And they showed too much of it to Taggart. <laughs> in by Saville with O'Connell and offside over on the far side signalled by the linesman now Ron's getting a bit animated down there with his team having a real struggle now against Barnsley they do get a bit heated down on the benches Fairness, Ron was fairly calm up here on the gantry in the first half. And he didn't even bother to use his phone to link up with Richie Barker down on the bench. O'Connell. Now, Saddle. Here's Banks. And the shot got through, and it was certainly deflected, so a corner to Barnsley. As we move into the last minute or so of this game. And Barnsley clinch it now. Taggart's come up. The big number three. And Tyler, too. The other marker from the back. And they have uh, Mark Smith and Rammel. Banks with the corner. Whistles from the Wednesday supporters. It's certainly not over yet. And that's safely over the top. Almost now into injury time, and if there's no further goal from either team, it'll be 30 minutes of extra time, and they still can't settle it. Penalties will be needed. Sheridan tidies up. And we, of course, will be staying with the action at Hillsborough. Staying with the drama of extra time, if it is needed, it's looking that way. But perhaps Barnsley will have one last say here. Agnew wins strongly. And Worthington able to steer it back as Rammel was marauding up front for Barnsley. Only a few seconds to go now. Referee Bob Nixon has had a good look at his watch. John Marks. So for Wednesday's turn, perhaps then for one last surge at Barnsley. Trevor Francis. Hurston Williams in the middle. Williams. Parks. Having to chase, and there is the whistle to end the 90 minutes. And Owen Archdeacon, with two goals for Barnsley, has taken this game into the extra period. Twice they've come back, Barnsley. Twice Sheffield Wednesday, given the lead by David Hurst. They reckon without this man, Owen Archdeacon. Stay with us for the whole of extra time. We'll be back after the break. <laughs>
Welcome back. Well, after 90 minutes of the Zenith Data Systems Cup, second round match between Sheffield Wednesday and Barnsley. It's two, uh, two goals apiece, which means we've got half an hour of extra time coming up. But before we see that, one? let's have a quick look, David, please, at Owen Archdeacon's second goal, the equaliser. Archdeacon with a clerical piece of finishing. That's what the producer said, but he's always been an idiot. Yes, he's a, he's a nimble player, very elusive player. That's a very difficult skill, the ball running away and him getting good uh, elevation there with his uh, kicking foot. Tremendous chip and beautifully placed into the far corner. Pressman, no chance with that. Clever piece of thinking. He's played a little bit wider this half. As I say, he's a good dribbler. He's a little bit frail and one suspects at times that if you're giving him a good thump, he might turn the other cheek. But um, he certainly can dribble and he certainly feels good tonight. You can feel every time that he gets the ball that he wants to go and cause some damage. Well, there's certainly been a transformation in Barnsley in this uh, second half. Let's see what they can do in the period of extra time. Over now to our commentator, Peter Brackley. Thank you, Matthew, and welcome back to Hillsborough as we prepare for the kick-off then for extra time. Another 30 minutes of excitement. Sheffield Wednesday now attacking the goal to our right. And I wonder just which way this tie is going to swing now. Off we go. Well, Ron Atkinson hearing me now down on the bench. What did you have to say to your players, uh, Ron? Just keep playing, try and keep a bit more compact and try and what they're doing very, very well, uh, Barnsley. Uh, they're latching onto our defensive headers. When our central defenders head it, they're picking up. I mean, the, the second goal was a first class example of that. Um, just keep playing and passing the ball. Any thoughts on substitutions at this stage? Yes, very much so. Very much so. We haven't much made any yet. What we've decided, well, we, go, we will do. What we've decided to do is try and keep the three forwards on down the hill. We'll see how it develops from there. Thank you, Ron. So we'll look out for substitutions fairly soon from Sheffield Wednesday. Barnsley have made one, of course, already. Mark Smith having come on for Brian McCord at the start of the second half. Agnew now had much more of a say in things as the game wore on. Pearson back to Pressman. Outsmarted by Archdeacon's goal. Which they'll be talking about here for some time to come, I'm sure. And here he is. Two goals on the night so far. Sheridan now for Sheffield Wednesday. It goes Pearson on Archdeacon. But turned in by Hurst. He's got two as well, if you're just joining us. Twice Sheffield Wednesday in front, twice Barnsley have pegged them back. And that's a free kick to Wednesday. Andy Savile getting nowhere there. Former Warsaw player, came for £80,000 back in March. And he's a good leader of the line. I didn't get a chance earlier on to ask Ron about uh, John Harks, the American player in the Sheffield Wednesday side. But he was due to play for the Americans in an international this week. They pulled him out because they didn't think he'd be fit, but he's made a recovery, sufficiently so for Ron to include in tonight. But he has been very impressed as Ron with uh, the progress that John Harks has made since coming over. Made his mark, first of all, in the uh, World Cup, of course, in Italy. Foul by O'Connell. Now Francis. Always something of a buzz around the ground when Francis has the ball. He uses it so well. But although Hurst climbed very high then, there was no direction on the header. Sheffield Francis, who desperately wants to play in the first division again next season, he hopes with Sheffield Wednesday. Blackburn have pulled a goal back against Everton, but that is a result. They've been beaten 4-1. 
So, a smile on the face at last of Howard Kendall. And there's Hurst sleeping it over. Flat was up anyway, it wouldn't have counted. Now, what's that? Tea, scotch, brandy? If I know Ron, it's tea. Loves his cups of tea, Ron. Get to the and that was advice, I would think, from Richie Barker alongside him. He's got a very loud voice. Another Zenith Cup score, and Crystal Palace are safely through. They've beaten uh, Bristol Rovers 2-1, and John Salako scored a winner there for Crystal Palace. So here, into extra time, it's 2-2, and it's a cup tie that really could go either way. So Palmer to take the free kick then for Sheffield Wednesday. Hoping to re-establish their command of the game. Rammel to backs. And that's O'Connell making a spirited run down the middle. Not sure whether Palmer had spotted him completely maybe out of the corner of his eye and there was just a, a scare then for a moment for Palmer and Pressman it was from Hurst Certainly a much improved display by Barnsley after their rather inept performance at Brighton on Saturday. Mainly in the second half. Different story tonight. And of course they gave Sheffield Wednesday a real fight too in the draw at Oakwell earlier in the season. And they seem to have a taste for the Zenith Cup. Having thrashed, well, was thrashed is the word in the end, West Bromwich Albion 5-3 away from home. And this man, Ian Banks, has got a hat-trick. Archdeacon now. He's on one for tonight. O'Connell. Well, he was hounded out of it by Pearson, but the referee saw nothing wrong. But again, he's given another lively display, O'Connell. And no wonder they rate him so highly at Oakwell. Francis. Pearson. And the foot uh, was high then as Hurst made his challenge. So free kick to Sheffield Wednesday. And that'll be the signal for Pearson to go forward, for Shirtliff to go up. They have the aerial threat to, of course, of David Hurst. Worthington with the free kick. Shot got through, but Hurst couldn't beat Baker this time. Shirtliff, I think it is, who gets up at the far post here. In fact, it came off the defender, and Hurst with no real power behind it. Shirtliff, Sheridan. Wednesday hoping to exploit any spaces that Begin to emerge now. As exhaustion begins to set in. Parks, that was a tired looking cross. £75,000 it cost to bring him over from the American Football Federation. And he's the first one really to make uh, a name for himself. First of the Americans, Ron Atkinson. Well pleased with his capture from the US. A game of many chances, and still it's delicately balanced at 2-2. Clumsy effort by uh, Pearson, but he was fouled by Rammel, who was quite obviously holding him off. So Pearson in trouble now. The former Shrewsbury player. 
score that vital goal on Saturday against Ipswich in the 2-2 draw. <laughs> Swallow dive. I think he's winded, but he's a big, brave, competitive player. And uh, once he's had some treatment to that leg injury, you can rest assured he'll be back in the fray for Sheffield Wednesday. They have uh, two defenders in reserve on the bench, Steve McCall and Phil King. And Ron Atkinson just chatting over with uh, Richie Barker, perhaps the possibility of bringing one of them on. Oh, there's Pearson. Back on his feet, just limping a little. But knowing him, he'll run it off. Palmer with the free kick. So Pearson this time hasn't gone up. Shirtliff has, though. It was Tyler who cleared it away. Worthington. And he's forced the corner. The Wednesday fans doing their best to urge their team on now. As they look to regain the lead once more. Wilson will take the corner. Pearson is now around the six-yard area. Wasn't the best of corners, though. Worthington, Wilson once more. A packed penalty area. And Agnew. Oh, he got caught in possession by Harks. smile from Hurst, a flicker of one from Ron Atkinson, and David Hurst has scored his hat-trick. Harks did so well then. Agnew was caught lingering, and Hurst had a Baker, a valiant effort to keep it out. Agnew then was really responsible for that, trying to dribble out of his own penalty area, and Baker, I think he was trying to scoop it away, and the header just had too much of a sting on it. So three goals for David Hurst, and it's Sheffield Wednesday three, Barnsley two. Four minutes in the first half of extra time still to go. 16 goals for the season for David Hurst, that equals his previous best tally. Harks, instrumental in the goal. Pearson. Deacon, well, he's done it twice, and he pulled another one back. Palmer, Agnew, his mistake led to the goal. Off goes Saville, Palmer had too much pace for him, though. It's turning into quite a night for David Hurst. Confirmation, 16 goals this season. Push by Tyler on Hurst. Hey, hey. Hurst once more, what a lovely turn. Straight into the body of Clive Baker. But Hurst once again showing how lethal he is around the penalty area. Created space for himself then by the speed of his actions. Young Tyler has really set the wrong way. O'Connell. Palmer. He's looked very strong at the back. He might have missed out his attempt at probing from midfield, but he's had a very sterling game. Taggart. Battling on as ever. And the argument <laughs> continues with Palmer, and that was very, very unnecessary. As I was saying earlier on, he is a character, but that was uncalled for, very immature, and I think the referee will be making that point to him in no uncertain fashion. 
Tyler's free kick, on for the game, Worthington. Williams. Here's Agnew. Tyler. Now Agnew. Well, I think Ron Atkins has lost his voice at the moment and the excitement of it all, but uh, let's hear what David Pleat has to say about the goal, David. Yeah, it was a fine goal, um, superbly well taken by Hurst. He's had a very fine game. You just saw a brief glimpse of, um, of him from that free kick there. So sharp in his actions, uh, turning Tyler is giving him a really hard time. He'll be very pleased with his efforts tonight. He's a strong player, he's got a good surge, he twists and turns. Sometimes he lacks a little bit of compatibility with other strikers. Um, but he is a type of player that defenders find it very difficult to handle because he likes to run towards the opposition goal. He's not one of these that just plays with his back to goal. He's prepared to stretch defenses. He'll be delighted with tonight, and I'm sure Ron and Atkinson will be delighted with him because at the end of the day, he's the one that's possibly pulled them through this game, a game where really, territorially speaking, they should have been in command at 90 minutes and not having to go to extra time. Thank you, David. Well, they still have some way to go yet. Tyler taking the free kick. And Barnsley have earned another one now, just outside that penalty area. So the pressure's back on Sheffield Wednesday. And I wonder what more drama might yet unfold in this rousing cup tie. Prasman hoping to get his angles right. Agnew is there, and Banks, and Archdeacon. And the man with two goals might fancy his chances here of adding a third. My money's on Archdeacon. And there he is, straight into the wall, though, this time. Wednesday streaming out. Tyler has given it away, and they could get caught on the break, but no, the pass got through and going astray. Archdeacon. And that very nearly Fountain Saddle there. Picked off the head of Pearson. Archdeacon almost picking out Andy Saville, and backs to take the corner. Taggart's come up, and Tyler. Bax. Worthington snapping back at him. And away come Wednesday. Frustration for Barnsley. Worthington now to Francis. The build-up by Wednesday. Wilson. Hurst in a lot of space away to his left. Here's Hurst now, looking for goal number four. And he very nearly scored it too. That's the end of the first period of extra time. Ron wants it called off now. You can't, Ron. There's 15 minutes to go. And uh, <laughs> I think he's going to make a substitution now. Trevor Francis. After his... Great efforts tonight on Sheffield Wednesday's behalf, getting a consoling hug from Ron Atkinson, and Steve McCall has come on now. Just a quick apology that we can't bring you Hitchhiker at the moment, because we are, of course, staying with this Zenith Cup second round tie. I hope to bring you that episode on another occasion. <laughs> So, 3-2 to Sheffield Wednesday. Can they hold on to it this time, or will Barnsley reply once again? Ron Atkinson, uh, how confident are you now, Ron? And a word on the goal, first of all. Um, <laughs> well, super balling from Harpsey. I had a feeling that, uh, in fact, I said to Richie Barker that uh, Hursty was on a hat-trick and was going to get one. In fact, Hursty might have had about eight with a bit of luck tonight, mightn't he? The shots he's turned and through uh -huh. one hit. The only thing that worries me a little bit without putting the kiss of death on it, I've got a feeling that Archdeacon's not far away from a hat-trick. In fact, that worried me on the free kick just before half-time, but we've battled it out. I mean, it's, it's 
been a hell of a game in terms of end-to-end -end and things happening. Now what we've done, we've pushed uh, McCall on into midfield to give us a little bit of a bolster in there. OK, Ron, and Barnsley, I see you fought on there, are the substitute to Dean Connolly. Fleming, O'Connell trying to wriggle through, now laid off by backs. It's all getting very competitive out there. Sheffield Wednesday at four up in this attack. Barnsley struggling to get players back. Williams now. Wants to take Taggart on. And off Connolly, who's a young Glaswegian. Here he is now. He came on as a substitute at Brighton on Saturday as well. He was on Arsenal's books for a while. Dean Connolly wearing number 12. And there's an injury, it's Archdeacon who has gone down in the centre circle. But he'll cherish those two goals, no question. Especially the second one. And Mel Machen, hoping his team can fight back once more. But he will be, I would think, fairly satisfied with the spirit they've shown tonight. He certainly felt they fell away at Brighton and they've had some disappointing results. This run of matches, seven now without a win. Played around 100 games for Celtic's first team. Smith's free kick. Connolly. One back by Williams. Now Taggart to Archdeacon. Worthington tussling with Saville. Tyler now. Wednesday's turn to defend. They've got everybody back behind the ball. Taggart for Barnsley. Connolly now. Saville trying to link up with O'Connell. There's no one upfield for Wednesday. Smith to Tyler. And O'Connell has made the run here now. And he's gone away from Farmer. O'Connell! Yeah! And it's gone in for Connolly. Connolly finished it off. It's 3 3. Superb play then by O'Connell, who was clear of Farmer and still had the confidence to cut back inside again. And Connolly, it was who finishes it off, comes off Pressman. Connolly, who's only just come on, slides it in. Oh, what an incredible cup tie. No complaints tonight about the, the drama and the action here. I don't think I'll speak to Ron for the moment. He'll be speechless. Tyler away. 3-3. Three, three. three goals from David Hurst. Archdeacon with two. And now Connolly. Shetliff. Sheridan. McCall. Always, always. And he spotted Harks away. So too, though, an Archdeacon. Here's Pearson. Sheridan. Couldn't shake off Ramel, but he's got the free kick. Of course, if uh, it stays like this at the end of extra time, it will have to be settled by penalties. Sheridan. And that congested penalty area. And we've got Ron uh, listening to me now. Well, Ron, what are you going to say about that one? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> no, that's right. Um, 
Ironically enough, it's probably the first mistake Carlton Palmer's made all night. He's let uh, O'Connell get the wrong side of him for the goal, and OK, after that, uh, he did quite well, the, the Barnsley lad. You know, picked his spot well. Um, what it does mean now, the whole game's back in the mixer. We were saying beforehand that he could be a danger man for them, wouldn't we, O'Connell? Oh, that's that. right, yeah. I mean, what, what has... I mean, Palmer has absolutely had a, a storming game in that in that position at the back, and yet that particular time he was very, very naive with his defence. But we've got to pick ourselves up now, and OK, if, if he goes to penalties, he goes to penalties, but we've got to try and uh, see if we can snap ourselves back into the game again. Is that on your mind now, penalties? Are you able to concentrate on no, think no, about no, that? No, no, the way this game's going, anything's happening. <laughs> Right, we'll join you again in a moment. David Hurst. Yes, Nothing on for him this time. He's been the scourge of Barnsley all evening, though. And he could have had six or seven, really. Pearson. To Shirtliff. Sheridan. With Wilson. Here's McCall now. Shirtliff to Worthington. Three, four in the middle. Wilson could fall kindly for him here. He got through and it took a nick on the way. So a corner to Sheffield Wednesday. Crowd raising their voices now, hoping to lift their team in the last few minutes. 3-3. Pearson's up. And Shirtliff. Good save again by Baker from her. Who else? So much seems to cut his way. And Baker palming it away for the corner. To be taken by Worthington. In goes Pearson. It's another corner. Terrific pressure now on the Barnsley goal from Sheffield Wednesday. Trying to clinch what might prove to be a winning goal, but who knows with this game? He has been splendid fair. Palmer's up there now. Whacked away by Savile. Worthington. No chance though for Danny Wilson, who's not exactly the tallest man on the field. A wasted pass really by Worthington. Excellent show by Barnsley tonight. Whatever the final outcome, I think uh, Mel Machin will have seen a lot of good things from his team. And certainly hope for the rest of the season after their disappointing recent run. Archdeacon. Connolly's gone outside him. Good tackle by Harks. Now, oh, what can Danny Wilson do here? Off goes Williams. Though. Very effective one from Mark Smith. But all Wednesday for the moment. Wilson. Pearson with a chance to cross it in. Worthington down. And Fleming just managed to guide it back. Worthington unlucky. Taggart to O'Connell. Just watching the replay there. Worthington very nearly making an impact. Savile. Here's Pax. The challenge though by Shirtliff. Off goes Sheridan. He has first upfield and Williams. Williams now. Taggart just easily brushes him aside, but then can't hold him back. Still Williams, and Taggart recovered well then. 
beat with a pace. There's some tired legs out there now. And it really does seem a pity that one of these teams has to go out. They've given their all here. Wilson to take the corner. Away! Away! It's Tyler out. Palmer. And they haven't come out quickly enough. And Hurst. I think thought he'd done the corner. Referee deciding that uh, it came off him. Five minutes to go. It stands at 3-3. Sheffield Wednesday against Barnsley in the Zenith Cup second round tie. Coming to you live from Hillsborough. If you're just joining us, three times Sheffield Wednesday have gone ahead. Now, Ron, is he writing out his penalty takers or is he sending me a note? I think he's making out his list. Each team will have to nominate five penalty takers. If it does go to penalties, looking that way. Although Barnsley here might have other ideas. Banks trying to shove off little Danny Wilson. There's a terrier out there. O'Connell now. This is Fleming. O'Connell once more. Now Banks. Fleming. Wednesday's turn to do the chasing. Not for long, though. Palmer striding out. And what a pity for him that David Hurst had chosen to go the other way. Tyler. Seesaw struggle now. Archdeacon. Smith to Tyler. Now Archdeacon. That's Pearson's header. Tyler to Banks. O'Connell. And some intelligent defending by Peter Shirtless. We're nearing the end of extra time. Sheridan can other, either side now pitch it before the necessity for penalties. Parks played in towards Williams. Smith, though, had read the situation. Connolly, scorer of that third goal for Barnsley. No Connell. Here's Fleming. Oh, O'Connell had not bothered on the run there. I think Fleming was asking rather too much of him. They've been battling away there now. Not only for the 90 minutes, but also for the extra time. Wilson. Williams ahead of him. Sheridan. Good block then by Smith. Don't give ground, he's saying. He was definitely a lot calmer up here in the first half, as Ron. But of course, very much uh, wrapped up in this game now, wondering if his team are going to go through or not. He was stressing beforehand the importance of Sheffield Wednesday having a cup run here. It's Archdeacon through. Saddle. Sword up, but couldn't make contact. A minute to go. And if they can't score a goal now, one of these two teams, it'll be a penalty shootout. And he will then have his work cut out, Kevin Pressman, along with Clive Baker at the other end. O'Connell. Saddle. brings it away. Wilson, surely then he was
was charged in the back by Connolly. The referee agrees. Free kick to Sheffield Wednesday. There's still time. But Ron knows there's not long to go. Shetliff taking the free kick. Pearson's gone up. There's Pearson now for Hurst. Well, you never know with him. But he certainly is not afraid to try his luck from all angles. And his reward tonight has been a hat-trick. And it still hasn't won the game. Busy old night for Clive Baker. And there's more to come yet by the looks of things. There's the final whistle. We're all waiting now then for the penalty shootout. David Hurst, well, he can smile. He's had individually a superb night. But Sheffield Wednesday have to settle for the draw and full marks to Barnsley for the way they've battled back. Well, 3-3, the latest score. We'll be back for the penalties in just a moment. But before we do, David, let's have a look back at the two goals in extra time. The first of them winning David Hurst, his hat-trick. Yes, uh, tired legs here, possibly. Agnew makes a mistake. I thought Hawkins, Hawks clipped that ball back superbly. The first-class firm downward header. Uh, there's Agnew once again, losing possession, uh, a real sin. And Hawks, out of nothing, screws that ball across the face of the goal. And I thought that was a really first-class striker's header. Um, the defender wouldn't be too happy with the way that uh, they conceded that equaliser from Barnsley. No, of course, and Carlton Palmer, Sod's Law, one of the outstanding performers uh, this evening for Sheffield Wednesday. He's gone and got on the wrong side there, and um, there was no cover when they went past him, and as he squirmed the ball across the face of the goalkeeper, uh, Connolly's uh, uh, pushed it into the net. Here it comes again. Palmer on the wrong side initially, tries to make up ground, dives in a little bit, and then, of course, maybe Shirtcliffe should have been further over to support Palmer once he'd gone uh, around him. There it is. Once again, on the wrong side, then lunges in and should have held his ground and then far too much time before placing the ball across the goal, deflection from Pressman. Um, a goal for perseverance and guts, really, and I think that probably would be the credit that Barnsley would get tonight. They kept at the game, having been footballed out of it in the first half by Sheffield. Well, we're heading for penalties now. Is there any way that you can predict the outcome? I'll try. Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think that uh, the boy Baker is a very good shot stopper anyway, a very athletic goalkeeper. I'm sure Pressman is too. But I think Baker's done well tonight at stopping shots, stopping efforts. Not quite so well in commanding and imposing himself when the balls were being played in from free kicks and corners. I think there's a greater pressure, even though there's not a massive crowd there tonight, there's a greater pressure probably on the home players at penalty kicks. And here we go. So here's the first penalty then to be taken by Barnsley. It's Ian Banks against Kevin Pressman. Not easy on the first man having the task of taking the opening kick. But, well, delightfully uh, tucked away then by Ian Banks. Full of confidence, big sigh of relief. Five penalties for each team. And if that still doesn't produce a winner, It'll be something dead. John Sheldon now stepping up for Sheffield Wednesday. An agonising way for a competition for a tie to be settled. But it can produce heroes and, of course, villains too. As England remember from their World Cup exploits. Sheridan over the top. And that's what I mean about the villain. But it's so sad, really, that uh, any player has to suffer that kind of fate. So, Andy Saddle, now then for Barnsley. This for 2-0. Barnsley now in control. 
If they score all five, they're through. It's David Hurst next for Sheffield Wednesday. And what an irony would be now if he missed, having scored the three goals. Romp can't watch. Clyde Baker looked pretty composed on the line. Hurst to score, most emphatically, too. But there's still one behind. Now it's Brendan O'Connell's turn. Paul Barnsley. That's how to strike a penalty home. Here's O'Connell. And he scored two. That's three. Three one now. No chance there for Kevin Pressman. Danny Wilson is next for Sheffield Wednesday. Oh, he almost saved it then. Well, he was most unlucky. Clive Baker, what a great effort. And Wilson has scored, so it's 3-2. Archdeacon now. Is this going to turn into a hero's night for him? Two goals so far. And he's done it once more. That's four for Barnsley. And they're almost there. McCall misses this. It's all over. Steve McCall. He saved it, Barnsley are through and Sheffield Wednesday are out of the Zenith Cup. The look on the face of Ron Atkinson said it all from Wednesday's point of view, but let's nothing be taken away from Barnsley's display. Three times they went behind, three times they battled back, and Clyde Baker now showing his agility and his talent that save there from McCall, taking Barnsley through, as they now accept the rapturous applause of their supporters back behind that goal. Sheffield Wednesday, troop dejectedly off the field. Oh, what a story here. Barnsley are one on penalties, and Mel Machen, their manager, is talking now with Paul Dempsey. Melbourne, I'm sure your heart was going. I must tell you, I never had you down as a winner tonight. No, well, we failed it. Um, we showed a lot of character tonight, and we came back three times. I know that they created one or two opportunities. You know, worst he was playing probably um, on a few mistakes. You You've know, gone horse, haven't you? I have, yes. But um, you know, I think it's um, just reward if you come back. You know, for three times, I think that's saying something. Very sweet to beat a big Yorkshire rival and in a sense one of the big brothers in Yorkshire football. Yes, very much so, but it was nice coming here, you know, it's a great ground. But, um, you know, we're going to the next round, let's hope we're at home. Who do you want? Oh, anybody at home. OK, have a good Christmas, Mel, Thank and we'll see much. you in the new year, well Thank done. You. It's a massive night at Hillsborough, I think you agreed, David. It was uh, incredible stuff in the end, and you never have thought that uh, Barnsley were going to come out winners and after all that? Well, I mean, it's even Stevens, when it goes to penalties, it's anybody's game. Um, maybe the pressure told there. Sheridan, one of the most influential players on the field tonight, one of the coolest and the most precise passers on the field, who goes and shoots over the bar. I'm sure that wasn't in Ron Atkinson's script tonight when he looked down from the gods in the first half. You know, he was cool, he was calm, he was collected, his team were in charge. And it just proves that when he came down on the bench, that his team went to pieces. <laughs> no, it was a good game, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of good football. Where do you think Ron went wrong? No, I don't think Ron went wrong. Uh, the, one could say then that the manager is ultimately responsible for everything. Um, I think they had it. They should have locked the door at 3-2. I think Colton Palmer made a mistake. It can happen. 
and um, they've gone and equalised. I thought at the stage they were winning 3-2, uh, I didn't see any problems to them. I thought they'd weather the Barnsley storm. I think you give credit Barnsley for coming back. Very few offsides, a lot of depth in the game, uh, good room for footballers to play their football. And both sides, I think, enjoyed the game. There's a lot of depth in the game. Who would you pick as your man of the match? Very difficult. I thought there were some good performances. I thought when Carlton Palmer played as the spare defender in the first half, he showed um, a lot of authority and athleticism coming through with the ball. He did quite well. Uh, Sheridan certainly. Agnew got better as the game went on. Archdeacon was tricky. Took a wonderful goal, which possibly put the game back a little bit in Barnsley's uh, court when it looked as though they were down and out. Um, Maybe we should give it to Archdeacon because in the end his team were the winners and that goal was a wonderful bit of skill uh, which uh, lighted up the evening. It was a good game. It was enjoyable. Okay, so Owen, Archdeacon, the man for you. David, thanks very much for joining us. Lots of other football action on tonight. We've got a chance now to catch up on the other scores around the country. There they are in the Zenith Cup second round. Blackburn 1, Everton 4 and Crystal Palace 2, Bristol Rovers 1. Now, we've got lots of other football news and action coming up on Sky. Uh, we have the quarter-final draw for the Zenith Cup live on Sky News around about 20 past 12 on Thursday, the day after tomorrow. So make sure you're watching for that one. And our next live action will feature one of those quarter-final matches. That'll be live on Tuesday, the 22nd of January, half past seven, live here on Sky One. And there's football happening right now if you care to tune your sets to Eurosport, which is featuring exclusive coverage of Peter, Sheaton, Peter Shilton's farewell match, uh, which features a whole host of international stars all converging on White Hart Lane and uh, some guaranteed action there. I think Bobby Moore is actually playing, so that'll be worth it. Anyway, for David Pleat and the rest of us here on Sky One, it's goodbye.